Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to show you how we relocate a European paper wasp nest. This nest had developed inside a toy box for children, so we knew it couldn't stay there for the season. Now that it's getting warmer, it was time to move it. So we're going to show you the whole process here. So here on May 19th, we have removed the paper wasp nest from inside the toy box and brought it into the shop. And we're giving you a close-up look at what's inside the nest at this point. What you see in this nest so far are some eggs, some immature larvae, some very mature larvae who are beginning to spin their silk caps to go into pupation, and also some nectar stored in the nest. It's always remarkable to look at these nests up close. You see so much life packed into these nests, and you realize each one of these worker wasps being born in this first generation is going to spend its life working for you, clearing your property of pest insects. Here is the foundress for this nest. We will put her together with her nest here again in a minute. So today we're going to show you exactly how to relocate a Polistes dominula nest. This is an invasive paper wasp here in Northeast Indiana. It actually comes from Eurasia. So that means parts of Asia, parts of Europe, usually the Mediterranean areas and parts of Northern Africa. That's where they're native to. But here they're considered invasive. However, that said, we raise them here best we can so that we can collect them for venom immunotherapy. And what that means is once this population has grown, you see right now it's all larva in there and that will soon become worker wasps and this colony will grow and become quite large at some point. Not as large as yellow jacket nests, but they may have dozens of them on there uh, at some point. When that happens, we're going to go ahead and collect it for venom immunotherapy and then we'll freeze the adult wasps to preserve their venom and we'll ship them off to bio labs in the States and also in Europe. That way they go to good use. And despite being invasive in this area, at least they can be collected and used for biomedical reasons. So as you can see here, the one wasp larva that's very active right now, it keeps circling around inside its cell. The reason it does that is because it has reached a point in its development where it realizes it's time to start going into pupation to become an adult wasp. So what they'll do is they will begin weaving a silk cap over their cell. And what they'll do is they will produce kind of a gel-like substance from glands inside their mouth. And that gel will be strung in small strands across the top of the cell. And as soon as it hits oxygen, it becomes a very strong silk thread, very similar to what silkworms will do when they're weaving silk for, that we use in clothing. Same thing, very tough material that simply becomes a very strong thread as soon as it hits oxygen. So that gel that they're creating inside these glands in their bodies is a pretty amazing process. It's mostly proteins. And you'll notice that when the adult wasp feeds her babies, she brings them a lot of protein in the form of insect meat that they hunt in the wild. That protein is converted into this gel and that gel is then converted into silk thread. So it all kind of flows together in a protein base. So in this nest, you still see small pink immature larvae. You see some drops of honey or regurgitated nectar, which is what the adult wasp will feed on sometimes while she builds her nest. You also see some new eggs in here. She'll make more eggs as she goes through and put one in each of these newer cells around the edges. Now what you're gonna need if you do a relocation, the easiest tools to use are these, very simple. A glue gun, hot glue gun, usually these are electric. We plug ours into just a basic portable solar generator. But you can plug it into any wall outlet and it's very easy to use and it dries very quickly. So that's why we like to use it. But you can also use super glue or other forms of glue. Now, the other thing we use is tape. That'll hold the container to the barn wall when we're done with this process. 
We have a planter, an old container they used to hold plants. It's just a cheap plastic thing you buy when you get any starter plants from a local nursery or hardware store or what have you. We always save these because they're great for incubating nests, especially paper wasp nests. And then we have the nest itself and we have the contained foundries for that nest. We'll reintroduce her to this nest shortly. One other item that might be useful for you is canned gas. We just use a canned duster and that's how we knock out the mother wasp when we put her back with her nest later on. And sometimes that's necessary, sometimes it's not, but it often will keep her on the nest a little bit more readily and it will prevent her from trying to flee. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is check out our glue gun, make sure it's producing glue. Looks like it's doing fine for glue. We're gonna take some of that glue and maybe we'll put it toward the back instead this time, maybe up here, keep it more protected. The reason we're putting the glue in the back of the container is that when we mount it on the wall, it's kind of like this, we're gonna tape the top of it so that we can open it up now and then. We'll put the tape right across here on the barn wall. And the fact is, if it's further away from the entry point where the wasps come in, then it'll be more protected from predators. So we're gonna take the nest so that it will hang down. We want it to hang upside down like it does in nature. So we're gonna mount it So that it's in that position. It's sitting in the glue. And right now, it looks like it's pointed up. And you can see the larva in there. But when we turn it over, like it will be hung, it will hang upside down. So that's the idea. So we're trying to get it right like that and hang it upside down. So we're gonna do this and let that glue solidify right there. I'm going to prop it up just a little bit here so it'll glue in the right position. And the great thing about this glue gun, hot glue, is that it dries so quickly that it doesn't take long at all to do this. Okay, so our next step is to go ahead and take the foundress wasp and reintroduce her to the nest. And the way we do that is we gas her a little bit. It's a temporary gas, kind of like tranquilizing a, a an animal for wildlife relocation, same idea. Let me just knock her out a little bit here. I'm gonna show you what happens as she passes out. The gas will start affecting her. And once she's pretty well disabled, she'll be on her back and she can't quite fly anymore. It's temporary, and we're going to put her now into a very small container that can fit over the top of the nest, like that. That way we'll get her reintroduced to the nest while she's disabled. Otherwise, they fly away, they panic. Now that she's in the bottom of this container, what we're going to do is we're just going to put it right over her nest so she ends up on her nest. Now, when she comes back to, after having been knocked out, she'll get right back on her nest and she'll hang out there for a while. And that's what we want. We want her to hang out on her nest and become reacquainted with it. That way her panic reaction slows down and she continues to check on the larva while she wakes up. You'll see her start to dip her head into each cell and check on the larva and walk around and say, oh, this is my nest. We're just letting her understand that this is her brood and she doesn't need to panic even though she's been moved from where she was before. Everything's okay, her nest is healthy, her larva's alive. And you see her now start to check on her larva. And that calms her down. That lets her know, okay, everything's okay. She's taking a drink from the larva. She's doing trophallaxis because the larva produce a fluid that she can drink for sustenance and that helps her calm down. And that's what we want. We want her to just stay right there on the nest. So we're gonna give her a few minutes to do that and wake up and get reacquainted. And as soon as that's done, that process, we're gonna move this whole container and mount it to the barn wall where we have the vespiary.
put that tape right here on the edge of the planter. Now that she's calmed down a little bit, we're going to take this planter out just like this, and we're going to mount it to the barn, and then we'll remove this just as we mount it to keep her from panicking and flying away. So this is where we're going to relocate the wasp nest. As you can see, there's several vespieri boxes already set up here on the wall. We're just going to add this one to this space. We'll probably put it right over here next to the other. So as you can see right now, she's still contained. She's still kind of comfortably hanging out on her nest here inside the container. And now we're going to remove this container and gently mount it on the wall. Here comes the other, by the way. This was a relocation. You see that wasp flying in up here to the other one. That was a successful relocation we did just the other day. And she's now been maintaining her nest, coming back and forth as she forages. And that's what we hope to see with this one. All right, so that one now is mounted and we'll do a better job with that tape later on. But for now, the main concern was just to get it done before she panicked and tried to fly away. And hopefully now she'll stay. She'll realize this is a safe place to be on our vespiary wall. Got a bunch of different wasp nests here that we're allowing to incubate until we can collect them for venom immunotherapy. Some of the native wasps, we're just allowing them to incubate and be part of the environment. We're not going to collect them for venom immunotherapy. But all of the Polices dominula, which is in these two black containers, they will be harvested for VIT later in the season when their populations are large enough. So what we're gonna do now is just watch these wasps begin the foraging process. You'll see them coming in and out of their relocated shelters and they will begin bringing in food and nest building material for their larva. So we started filming from this angle for about half an hour and within that time the wasp in the first container in the foreground she left and returned nine different times so every few minutes she was out and about coming back with something for the nest so keep your eye on that top hole in that first container in the foreground, you're gonna see a lot of activity. We're just gonna compress the time for you so you can see her coming and going. Here you see her returning again, and she's checking out the new container we just put up today, and she understands that it's not hers, and she comes next door and goes into her unit. In this next clip, we've slowed it down a little bit for you because what you see here is a Polistes metricus. This is a wasp that lives next door in one of the other relocated nests we set up this season. She's just coming in to take a look at these and she's a little bit lost. Eventually she went back to her own house. This actually happens a lot. When you line up a lot of wasp boxes in a row, the returning wasps will come along and they'll sort of bop along door to door until they find the right house and then they'll go in and get into their nest. On this day it was unseasonably warm, almost 90 degrees, and she came out her front door here for a moment and just started fanning. And what that means is she beats her wings to cause a draft to blow onto her nest, which is right below her, just inside the planter right about where the circle is on the bottom of that planter. That's where the nest is located. So it was able to feel that breeze, and this actually cools the nest. And what she'll do is she'll fly out of the nest, pick up some water, bring it back, deposit it inside the nest in one of the cells, and then she'll fan on it, and that will actually cool the nest through evaporative cooling. So she spent a fair amount of time here fanning on this day and we won't show all of that, but it is an interesting behavior, and it does, in fact, help keep the nest healthy on the very hot days.
Here we slow down the clip a little bit so you can see a very metallic blue wasp that flies up and checks out this area. This is a mud wasp, a very beneficial insect, native insect that hunts spiders for its own nest. It's looking for spiders underneath the eaves. Meanwhile, our foundress comes out again here, fans a little bit, and then takes off to go forage some more. Here she's returning again to the nest after foraging. Obviously, we're compressing the time for you between the time when she leaves and returns. She'll stay on the nest for a while and then leave again. In this next clip, we'll show you how we first check on the new relocated nest. So we're gonna take a look with the scope cam. That's this device here with a fiber optic camera on it. And we're going to just take a look inside the newest relocation. See if we can get a look at our foundress in there. Make sure she's doing okay. So as you can see on the scope cam footage here, she was initially hiding behind the nest in there. But then she comes out to take a look and see what the bright light is all about. And at that point, we knew she was doing fine. She was staying with the nest. It was just a matter of time before she would start to forage, just like the one you see in the foreground. And that's what you're looking for. When you do a relocation, once they start coming and going and foraging, you know that's going to be a successful relocation. And on these hot, sunny days in particular, you see her coming back again so briefly. You should see within 24 hours that type of very rapid coming and going, especially on real hot, bright days. And as you see in this clip, there were many wasps out under the eaves, coming and going, exploring what's underneath the eaves, looking for nesting sites, or just curious about the new arrivals who came in. And you'll see that mud wasp return here in a moment, the blue, metallic blue mud wasp. There's just a lot of activity this time of year. And it's really important that we encourage wasps to do what they're doing here, foraging, hunting, knocking down pest insect populations. They are super important for the ecosystem and we need to do everything we can to allow this kind of activity to really thrive in our environment. You see how often she comes and goes. When they're hunting actively, they're just as busy and they're knocking down pest insect after pest insect after pest insect all day long on your property. So they're doing you a favor. So what you don't want to do is come under here with a can of Raid and spray the bejesus out of the whole thing just because you see a bunch of wasps. The point is the wasps are supposed to be there and they're your friends and they're doing the right thing for you. So do your best to allow any wasps you find to thrive in the ecosystem and do their important work for us. They're great pollinators, they're great biological control agents. They'll take care of your property, so take care of them. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.